Hi, I'm Dr. John Schlenz. I'm a podiatrist here at Aurora Advanced Healthcare, and I thought I'd talk to you this afternoon about heel pain and plantar fasciitis. Its causes, uh, some treatments, and what you can do about it. Heel pain and plantar fasciitis usually result from faulty biomechanics that place increased stress on the heel bone and the soft tissues that attach to it. Heel spurs result from a stress on the fibrous band on the bottom of the foot, which is called the plantar fascia. This stress results in repeated tearing away of the membrane that covers the heel bone. The tearing away of this tissue causes a heel spur to develop, in effect, with the heel trying to reattach this plantar fascia that's pulling away. The plantar fascia runs from the ball of the foot, as you can see here, to the heel. The plantar fascia is a band of tissue that's very fibrous and doesn't have the ability to stretch. So in a foot that's in this position with a good arch, there's a relaxed position of, of the plantar fascia and it runs naturally from the ball back to here. When your foot becomes flat or pronated, such as in this model, you can see that first of all the distance between the metatarsal heads and the heel is increased. It was four and a half inches over here on this one and is about six and a half inches here. Since this band of tissue does not have the ability to stretch, it becomes tightened in when your foot's in this position and it becomes torn at the heel attachment back here. It's a triangular type of band that attaches to the metatarsal heads up here in the front and then kind of narrows back and attaches to mainly one point on the medial side of the calcaneus or heel bone back here. So this is its weak attachment and when your foot walks in a flat or pronated position it becomes strained at this area and causes heel spur and plantar fasciitis. Now heel pain can start out very mild and if attention isn't paid to it, it can become chronic. It usually starts as pain after exercise, uh, when you first get out of bed in the morning, after resting, and after sitting down for a while in those first few steps after you get up, say after you watch a movie on TV. It can also affect your hips, knees, and back because the pain in your foot is changing the way that you're walking. Now as far as treatment's concerned, there's different ways to treat it. First of all, we want to rest it and not go barefoot. Going barefoot allows your foot to walk pronated like this without any support in the arch and that again puts more stress on the plantar fascia. Other things that can be done are stretching your Achilles tendon. If your Achilles tendon is tight that leads to comp compensation and more pronation as you're walking and so you want to stretch your Achilles tendons like runners do. You can use ice on it at night and rest. You don't want to do any exercises that cause pounding on the heel uh, as you're doing your exercise. You can also use a uh, night splint, which I have here, but these can be cumbersome to use. You can sleep with this, and this holds your foot in somewhat of a dorsiflex position, stretching your Achilles tendon as you sleep, but again, they can be cumbersome and, and not fun to be sleeping with at night. As far as everyday thing, we want to use uh, arch support inside the shoe, such as an orthotic. If this is the position that we want your foot in, with a good arch and not pronated, if we put an orthotic device in there, you can see how this helps to hold this foot in this position, allowing rest on the plantar fascia again. If the con if the pain continues, we can give you oral anti-inflammatory medications, and if it gets worse, cortisone injections. Rarely we'll use physical therapy, and extremely rarely surgery is needed. So thanks very much for listening. I hope uh, you learned some facts about heel pain and its causes and treatment today.